Hey, how's it going, guys? So The Last of Us, episode six. This episode was re really acted like a catalyst for Joel and Ellie. It really pushed them forward. So I want to jump. I want to jump into the last moment in the show. Instead of starting from the beginning, I'm gonna jump right into the last moment because at that moment, everything changed for these characters. So this is after Joel gets hurt, right? He's passed out. He falls off the horse. Ellie immediately goes over him. She's crying. She's looking at him. And what does she say? I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm going to do this without you. She immediately starts talking about how Joel's death affects her. Affects her personally on a functional level, not an emotional level, right? I don't know what to do. I can't, keep, I can't move on. I need your knowledge, your information, your guidance. What am I going to do without you? And then what happens? She breaks down and says, Joel, please, Joel, please. And the way she says that, in that moment, I knew the blanket was taken off. The blanket was removed. The blanket that both Joel and Ellie wore to protect themselves from their own emotions, protect themselves from how they felt about each other. That blanket was removed. No longer was Ellie protecting herself like, okay, the reason why Joel is important to me is because he can take me from point A to point B. Functionally, he is important, and that's value, right? Now it's forget about all that. Forget about the trip. Forget about the journey. Forget about how much I need Joel to get from point A to point B. Forget about all that stuff. I just don't want Joel to die because I care about him. The blanket was lifted, and the emotions revealed. That was a blanket that both Joel and Ellie wore, and it was removed. It was removed from both of them. I, I feel at, le at least in this scene, it was removed from Ellie. So moving forward, I feel like now that this blanket is this blanket is removed, we have we have now at by, from this episode, we have now moved past all the obstacles that this show had built. My complaints about episodes one through four, how they created these obstacles, how they didn't show Joel and Ellie growing. How didn't, they didn't show that relationship grow. They sort of just showed them that they were strangers, that they didn't communicate with each other properly, right? Ellie was being really condescending, and Joel was was really soft, and he still is soft. He's not like Joel in the game, but at least now, all those hurdles that the show has built for themselves, because remember in the show, like, they had them like as strangers, and then boom, in episode four, they immediately are like, they have a relationship now, and it came off as cringe to me, because... It wasn't genuine because they didn't show the the progression of the relationship. And then by the time episode five came out, came out, I'm like, okay, we're on the right track here. But I just wish that we, you know, got that build up. And then now with episode six, there were scenes like I still wished we could have had the build up, like the scene where um, Joel and Ellie were talking in the room together. You know what? Let's jump into that right now, actually. I thought that scene was done well. The acting was done well. I really felt the performances. I felt the emotion, but. As I was watching it, I was like, I wish this would have hit a whole lot harder if I felt that these two, if I was on that journey with these two growing up until this point. I'm not her, you know. Maria told me about Sarah and... No. Don't say another word. I'm not her, you know. What? Maria told me about Sarah. Ellie! And... You are treading on some mighty thin ice here. You're right. You're not my daughter. And I sure as hell ain't your dad. You're right. You're not my daughter. And I sure as hell ain't your dad. We are going our separate ways. Like I said, I thought the scene was done well, but Joel didn't have that anger that Joel had in the game. All right, I'm already jumping all over the place with this review. So before I continue teleporting all over this episode, let's jump to the beginning. The episode starts off in the snow, in the winter, right? And I'm like, whoa, wait, what's going on? Because the first time we see actual heavy snowfall on the ground, from what I remember in the game, it was... When the, when the bunny rabbit died. And that was after Joel got hurt and Ellie's taking care of him. She's out there hunting with a bow and arrow and everything, right? So I'm thinking like, whoa, did we just have a crazy huge timescape? Why are we already in the winter? Joel's walking around fine. Are we, not, are we skipping that whole section? Turns out 
it was just the snow. They were just snow on the ground. I don't know why they did that because in the game, I, this is minor. This is very minor, but it adds impact. It adds impact for the scene when when it's revealed in the game because snow. It's cold. Everything is dead. Just seeing the complete change of of the environment to the snow to Ellie being the you, the character you're controlling to Joel being the one passed out not being able to fend for himself he was the one that's taking care of the situations all this while and now Ellie has to Ellie has to fend for herself I just added a bit more of a punch visually and emotionally and all that stuff but that but that's minor that's minor so Joel and Ellie they uh they're at this house, right? This elderly couple are there, like this old Native American couple. I like those two. I like the dynamic between those two. So Joel and Ellie are making their way throughout the day, and they're camped at they camped out at night. And Ellie asked for alcohol, and she's and then Joel says no, and then she's like, "Come on," and Joel gives it to her. That would <laughs> Joel in the game would that would not have happened if Joel said no. He means no. And how did he change his mind that fast <laughs> out of nowhere? Makes no sense. Joel would not have given Ellie alcohol like that in the, in the game. But other than that, the conversation around the fire, it was nice. I liked it. Like I said, I like the banter between them two. And it's, it feels like they're finally filling out their roles. Finally. And it's, it was really nice to see. But then Joel asks a question that I did not expect him to ask at all. I was like, whoa, did you really just say that? He asks Ellie, what is she going to do after? After them two. And I'm like, whoa, I don't want to know this. I don't want to know. I don't want to know this. I don't want. Joel didn't have to say that. He did not have to say that. Expose that he was thinking about what's going to happen after Ellie and him split up. Because in his mind, maybe he's thinking, I don't want to split up with this girl. Maybe we have. Uh, I, I really want to hold on to her. I care about her. I don't want to know exactly what is going on in his mind. Because does that mean at this moment he doesn't care to stay with her? Or does he feel like he doesn't deserve to stay with her? Maybe he's not capable of protecting her like we find out later in the show. Like, I don't want to know that. I want Joel to feel capable that I am, this is, this, I'm going to take care of this girl, right? Those emotions, let us feel them. I don't want Joel to have to tell the viewer, this is what I'm thinking. You know, either that I, I feel like I'm not adequate to protect her anymore, like we find out in the show, or that I really want to hold on to this girl. I don't want to let her go. I don't want. I don't want to know exactly what is going on in Joel's mind. I don't want him to actually say it. I want to feel it through his actions, the way he behaves. In the game, Joel has a habit of not expressing his emotions, not expressing his feelings, and I feel like with the show, it's kind of the opposite. Joel is very emotional, and he's soft. So anyways, they wake up the next morning and Joel's asleep. Joel wakes up and Ellie's awake already. Ellie had the, has the gun and everything. She took second watch. Joel fell asleep and she took second watch. And Joel's like, why didn't you wake me up? You should have woke me up. And the, that, that dynamic between them two right there was really nice. It felt like Joel was taking responsibility over Ellie, right? And he has before in the past, but I felt it more here. Joel was taking responsibility over Ellie and it was nice to see. So he gets up and says, wake me up next time. And Ellie smiles and says, yes, sir. And that was cute, man. Like no snarky comeback, no being condescending or anything like that. That was cute. I like that. So, so they pack up their things and they're walking. And I'm telling you, man, the banter is done well. I'm really, I'm enjoying the banter. And Ellie's, <laughs> this scene was hilarious. Ellie was whistling. She was trying to whistle. She was practicing whistling. And Joel was like, wait, you don't know how to whistle? And she's like, does it sound like I know how to whistle? Because she's literally blowing through her lips. Uh, I, I'm really enjoying the banter. But then, boom, we see the dam. And I'm, that's when I'm like, whoa, okay. So they didn't skip everything. They just made some changes to the weather for some reason. I'm not sure why. So they make their way past the dam. And that's when the riders of Rohan show up. That was hilarious. So it was like just a scout group from Jackson coming in. And, and they take... They take Joel and Ellie over to Jackson. And honestly, I prefer the game. I like Joel and Ellie walking up to the gates. And the one that lets them in is Tommy. Because it gave Tommy a sense of importance. You felt like, okay, Tommy has some authority over here, right? He said, let him in. We're letting him in, right? It gave Tommy that sense of, it gave Tommy that sense of authority. And in the show, they stri I feel like they stripped Tommy of any authority. But okay, before I get into that. So Joel and Ellie walk in and they see we see Tommy working like a construction worker. And again, that sort of strips Tommy of this 
of this authority type figure, right? Um, I mean, I know everybody works together. Everybody, everybody, every, everybody works on everything. It's like a community and all that stuff, right? But just the first appearance of Tommy in the game, I felt, I felt like you know Tommy made something of himself over here. You know, he's in charge. Or he's at least a leader in in this group. You know, um, but anyways, they see Tommy, and this was the best acting coming from Pedro, by far, in my opinion. The way he's, he's like Tommy, the way he yells out to Tommy. Tears in his eyes. They both run to each other and they hug. I really felt that reunion between Tommy and Joel. And they're hugging. And then Ellie just like looks down. Because it's different now. Joel has Tommy. Joel has family. Ellie has no family. So, and again, see, this would have hit a whole lot harder if we felt that relationship grow between Joel and Ellie in the beginning of the show. Because... It would we would have felt like okay Joel and Ellie they feel like family at this point like it's hard for them to get up get a, be pulled apart especially for Ellie because she doesn't have anybody else in this world Ellie feels bad man because she feels it in her heart like she knows she's not permanent in Joel's life because she's not family Joel has family and she feels alone all over again so they're walking through the town and Ellie sees a sheep she's like hey Joel check it bah. like. The banter between, I keep saying it, but the banter between Joel and Ellie, I'm liking it. I'm really liking it. So we get to the point where Joel and Tommy split off and Ellie and Ellie and Maria go, you know, get washed up, get her, get her, get her clothes and all that stuff. And, you know, Ellie didn't want to leave Joel because, you know, Joel's her foundation. Joel's her family. Uh, so but anyways, Joel and Tommy talk. And I really like that dynamic between those two. You have Joel, who is more, I feel like he's more he wears his emotions more on his sleeve in the show than he does in the game. They're both broken characters, but you feel it. You see it a whole lot more in the show. So Joel, his life sort of halted at the death of Sarah, right? He hasn't, it's hard for him to move on, move past that. And Tommy, he's having a kid with Maria. So he's moving on. And so you see like the dynamic between the two. Because Joel comes back to Tommy and he thinks everything is going to... He wants everything to jump back to how things were. But Tommy grew. Tommy has moved on. Tommy has a life. He has a wife. He has, he's have a, he has a kid on the way. So Joel came back and thought, Hey, I'm going to pass off Ellie to you. Maybe we can both do this together. He thought things were going to be back to normal. He's going to pick up where things left off. And I'm having my little brother back. But no. His little brother grew up. And he has his own life now. And that dynamic was really good. That dynamic was good. I also want to mention they used the Last of Us soundtrack. I feel like they used it more in this episode than any other episode. Again, obviously, the Last of Us soundtrack is awesome. And the more they use it, the better. So I was, that's a, that was a real great addition to this episode. We then switch over to Maria and Ellie. And Maria is trying to turn Ellie against Joel? Like, what? This made me dislike Maria, man. She said, the ones who can betray us are the ones we trust. So... She's telling Ellie not to trust Joel because of what Joel's done in the past. And then Ellie had to defend Joel. Like, well, yeah, then you can say the same thing about Tommy, your, your husband, right? Because he did the same thing. And then, like, dude, lady, back off, lady. Back off. But that whole conversation made things worse because Joel and Tommy were having another conversation later on that Ellie overheard. She defended Joel and then overheard that Joel wanted to get rid of her. So, man, that had to hurt. So this conversation with Joel and Tommy, Joel wouldn't have acted like this. Joel would not have acted like this. They changed, I'm telling you, man, they're making Joel crazy soft. Joel was crying to Tommy, saying that he's weak. He's not strong. He has no confidence in himself. He can't see, he can't hear. That's why the kid pinned him down with the gun. Remember what happened in the game? <laughs> I don't want to hear Joel cry about his insecurities. First of all, he was a beast in the game. Then they nerfed him in the show. And then now he's crying about those nerfs. He's crying about his insecurities that they gave him in the show. His weaknesses in the show. He's crying about them. I don't want to hear that coming from Joel. In the game, Joel was cold. Joel was hard. He wouldn't have, even if Joel had these weaknesses in the game, he wouldn't have admitted them. What makes you think I'd do this for you? 
This isn't for me, Tommy. This is for your damn cause. My cause is my family now. Jesus, boy. Have Maria get some of your born-again friends to do it. They but got I... families, too. Tommy, I need this. You want some gear? Sure. But I ain't taking that girl off your hands. This is how you gonna repay me, huh? Repay you? For all those goddamn years I took care of us. Took care? That's what you call it? I got nothing but nightmares from those years. You survived because of me! It wasn't worth it. I bring you the cure from mankind, and you wanna play the pissy little brother. And it's not just physical. He's emotionally weak. He's saying he, he failed in life. He failed after Sarah died. So he fails every day. He's a failure. He fails when he goes to sleep because in his dream, that's all he sees. So he's failing every night in his dreams. He's failing every day in life. I mean, it's realistic, right? Because after losing your daughter, you're going to be broken. It's going to be hard for you, right? But the way Joel and the game handled it and the way Joel and the show hand is handling it is two very different things. He's put himself in this mental prison of negative emotions and self-doubt. And it's hard to break out of that. This Joel, I'm honestly, yo, this Joel in this show needs Andrew Tate. <laughs> he needs him. So basically, this was his whole pitch. Like, I'm weak. I can't continue on taking Ellie because I'm, gonna I'm just going to get her killed. Tommy, I need you to take her. So, you know, Tommy gives in. He's like, all right, you know, I'm going to take her. First thing, come down. And that's when we jump into the scene in the room that I was talking about earlier where Ellie pushes Joel and, and that whole that whole conversation that I thought was done well. But they switched up some scenes because remember in the game, Ellie gets upset because, you know, Joel wants to leave her here. And so she takes his horse. She steals the horse and she runs off. And Joel and Tommy get on horses and chase after her. And that's when the confrontation happens. In the show, it all happens within the town. And this leads us into another difference between the show and the game. When it came time for them to split up, in the game, Joel didn't wait. Joel didn't ask Ellie what she wanted. He knew what she wanted. And the other thing is he accepted what he wanted. He acts like a father and he makes the decision. And he still stays that proud, strong Joel and he doesn't outright admit his feelings. In the show, Joel turns over that decision to Ellie. You deserve a choice. I still think you'd be better off with Tommy. Let's go. Okay. Ellie, get off your horse. Give it on back to Tommy. I'm gonna hang on to this fella. That's all right with you. Go on, don't make me repeat myself. What are you doing? Your wife kind of scares me. <laughs> I don't want her coming after you. Sorry for stealing your horse. Well, come back to town. Let's discuss it at least. You know me, my mind's all made up. You take care of that wife of yours. place for you here. No. You good? I'm good. Adios, little brother. We then get some cool shots of them riding to the university. They're playing the Last of Us soundtrack. They're playing the end credit theme. That got me curious. What music are they going to use for the end credits for the finale of the show? So we're riding through the university. Again, the banter is nice. And Joel gets hurt. He doesn't fall from the building. All the action is dialed down in the show. So Joel is not doing these incredible feats like he did in the game. And that again adds to the weakness of Joel in the show. So anyways, so Joel instead he gets stabbed by a, the, the latter half of a baseball bat. And he passes out and again, boom, we get into the end of the episode like I talked about at the beginning of this review. I thought this episode was done well. It had the best moments the show has ever had in this episode. I'm looking forward to the future of the show. I'm looking forward to episode 7. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. How did you guys like the episode? Let me know. And I will see you guys in episode 7. Take care. Bye-bye. So the detective in me is like, alright, so is this foreshadowing that he's going to get beat by another sports instrument in the future? <laughs> That's not funny.